very many Kenyans are overjoyed yeah, at the word given today by a high court in Nairobi of 7 million shillings to Miguna Miguna, self-proclaimed General Miguna Miguna. The high court further awarded Buana Miguna 207,000 yeah, to repair his damaged house. Now, of course, this money will be paid by the Kenyan taxpayer. Yep, me and you will have to pay for a bizarre blunder and mistake made by the government of Kenya. You know, it is very difficult, extremely difficult, not to believe that this was a decision, a haphazard decision, made in some bar by drunk Kenyan government officials. Yes, the initial decisions that uh, resulted in this payment of damages, or rather this award of damages, to Miguna Miguna. It is very difficult not to imagine the following conversation. Amongst responsible, yeah, or rather people who are supposed to be responsible, government official, people who should be well aware that every decision they make is not for themselves, it's not for their ego. Every decision they make affects Kenyans and sometimes millions of Kenyans. And therefore, anybody making decisions at this level should be extremely sober. So the conversation probably went something like this. Patia mimi taska ingine. Sasa huyu mtu miguna anasumbua sisi sana. What will we do to him? Then somebody else says, Si huyu mtu akona Canadian citizenship. Si akona Canadian passport. Na alipata hii passport before 2010 constitution. Ah, he raises son. Deport him. He's legal is not Kenyan. Technically, he's not Kenyan. Weka ye kwa ndege, rudisha ye Canada. Uko kwao. Asikuji kusumbwa sisi hapa Kenya. Well, that drunken stupor decision has just cost us 7.2 million. And you might not think this is a lot of money. And indeed, it is not a lot of money. But that's not the point. Who gave you permission to waste even one Kenya shilling, yeah, from taxpayers. Who gave you that permission? Let alone 7.2 million. Actually, there's a bit of reality here, or rather shall I call it inside information, that maybe many Kenyans are not aware of, yeah, that informed this very terrible decision. You see, Miguna was initially picked up <laughs> Rather, he was kidnapped. He was violently kidnapped. Now, I strongly believe I'm using the correct English words because sample this. Police, yeah, or rather plainclothes security personnel, stormed his house. They used explosives to blow up his front door. And then they took him to an undisclosed location. So for all intents and purposes, Meguna had been kidnapped. And of course, his family were concerned. Yeah, his family is in Canada. Because anybody who knows the Kenyan government well, at least how it was operating at that time, would know that the government would easily have turned around and said, we don't know where Muguna is. Yeah, persons unknown kidnapped him, and we have no idea where he is. And so the right play, yeah, and sometimes it can save somebody's life, the right play is to put pressure yeah, very early, right from the word go. And the Canadian government, through diplomatic back channels, yeah, started asking the Kenyan government, where is this man? And so, it was probably this pressure from the Canadians that gave some genius, in quotes, somewhere, the bright idea, in quotes also, yeah, to deport the man, to deport a Kenyan. In fact, to be very honest with you, I have no idea why the government did not save themselves time yeah, and settle this thing out of court by facilitating Miguna's return. Instead, they allowed the thing to go to court. If I was in government, I would never dream of building up somebody's political profile 
because this is precisely what the government did and is still doing. Because had Miguna Miguna not been deported, had he not been taken through all this hell on earth he has been taken through, nobody would be paying attention to him now. Nobody would be listening to anything he's saying now. However, because of this gross injustice, yeah, they're giving Miguna a lot of mileage, yeah, and they still are, which makes absolutely zero sense to me. Now, there's a certain argument which has been going round, and I believe it's still going round, which claims that it's Miguna's fault, that he's refusing to sign some papers. Papers allegedly to restore his citizenship. Now, sincerely, even before the High Court judgment today, this is a no-brainer for somebody who has absolutely no legal training or even understanding. Miguna never left the country yeah, so that you force him to sign papers to re-enter the country. What happened is that Miguna was forced, forcibly, yeah, deported from his home country. And so, even if you want him to sign papers, you need to return him yeah, to the situation he was in before you came in. And what situation was that? Miguna was in Kenya. Miguna was in his house. He never booked a ticket to go out of the country so that when he tries to re-enter, you deport him a second time. At it because he has refused to sign some papers to re-enter the country. That makes zero sense. So if you're the Kenyan government and you're honest and you're genuine about this, what you do first is you return Miguna to the situation he was in before your goons kidnapped him. And then when he's safely back in his house, you can send immigration officials there with papers for him to sign. Yeah? And then Miguna Miguna, while he's in Kenya, while he's in his house, will have to demand an explanation as to why he needs to sign papers and maybe even go to court to contest signing those papers while he is in Kenya. But you kidnap somebody, you force him out of the country the first time, the second time you put him to sleep, which is completely illegal, yeah, you put him on a plane while he's unconscious, <laughs> and the man wakes up in an airport in Dubai. Gosh, what were these people thinking? Anyway, let's move into the politics. Yeah, because I've been criticized a lot. People have been telling me, why don't you feature Miguna on your channel anymore? Now, in my view, and this is my personal view, I could be wrong. I'm not always right. In my view, Miguna is a brilliant lawyer, has a brilliant legal mind. But he is not a politician and he does not understand politics. You know, some people find politics disgusting, and with good reason, because there's a lot of give and take in politics. There are a lot of things in politics that are very hard to stomach. In fact, a lot of things in politics. You know, former President, uh, American President Bill Clinton, in his biography, said that lawmaking, yeah, which involves politicians, lawmaking is like making sausages. You know, when that sausage is in your frying pan, yeah, in your kitchen, it looks very appetizing. However, if you're ever allowed into the factory that makes sausages, you'd probably never eat sausages again in your life. The process of making sausages is very far from being appetizing. You know, there's an African sausage many people like, and it's called mutura, where you stuff in blood and small pieces of meat. Yeah, into something and then you fry it. Now that process of uh, uh, stuffing in the bloody meat and taka taka and everything to make the mutura <laughs> is very unappetizing. I've actually seen it happen. Some years back when I was living amongst my beloved in-laws, yeah, the house of Mumbi, the Kikuyus. Anyway, politics is like that. Now, let me even give you another example, yeah, directly from politics. Some years back, yeah, some women legislators in parliament needed to pass a very important gender-related law. In those days, parliament was dominated by men. 
And you know when you have a crowd of men, typical men, very many of them in one place, and then there are few ladies, they behave the same. And their age doesn't matter. In fact, the older they are, the worse they are. <laughs> Let me just leave it at that. So it was very important to them that they get this law passed. And to do this, they had no choice, yeah, but to approach and lobby this crude and cooth man. So you can imagine what they went through, yeah. You approach these uh, legislators, yeah, you tell them, please, I want you guys to vote for this bill. It will help your daughters, etc., etc., etc. And then these legislators start touching your breasts. Maybe even they start touching your backside. Of course, you can lose your temper and walk away. But then no bill will be passed. You will not succeed. That is exactly how politics is. So you just vomilia and you discuss with them even as they are behaving in such a manner hey, that would make any respectable and even non-respectable woman throw up. And they may even ask you for a date as a condition to passing the bill. So what a wise woman does, it, she tells them the date is on. Immediately this bill is passed. And of course when the bill is passed, <laughs> you will not be seen at that date. Yeah, you get my drift. In the end, you succeed and you get your bill passed. That's how politics is. It's a game of compromise. It's a game of give and take. Now in my view, what Miguna Miguna should have done, immediately the government gave him this golden opportunity by putting him up there on a pedestal yeah, as a major political player. Indeed, up to today, Miguna is referred to as an opposition, a leading opposition politician. What he should have done, he should have played politics. But what did Miguna do instead? Yeah, he alienated everybody. He even started attacking Raila Odinga, saying that his trouble started yeah, with the swearing in of Raila Odinga, which of course is true. However, this is politics. The last thing he should have done would have been to alienate yeah, Raila Odinga supporters. Because Raila Odinga is not a joke. This man has massive support right across the country. Whether you like or hate him, he is not a man you can hurl insults at yeah, and expect wide political support. No way. Yes, Miguna is very principled. However, even with their principles, the right play is to play politics until you reach that position where you are independently powerful. Where you can successfully lose all around you that you see as trash and it will not affect you politically. I said in a video on this channel at the time Miguna was going through his troubles, yeah, that what he should have done would have been to get political thinkers and advisors around him. Carefully map out a strategy yeah, and follow it. Had he done things differently, now we would be talking a very different story. Because as I make this video, let's be very honest, politically, many people don't see Miguna how they saw him at the time when his trouble started. He has lost a lot of ground politically, which is very sad because I believe Kenya needs very many Migunas, principled people, people who can make a difference. But when you get a chance like Miguna, yeah, and you don't play politics, and therefore you fizzle out, it doesn't help Kenyans. And at the end, we all lose because Kenya loses a golden opportunity to change its leadership to revolutionize the way the country is led. And of course, Miguna made matters worse by having money squabbles with the Kenyans in the diaspora. He was invited somewhere to speak, yeah, and then after the event, he demands more money. Maybe it's true some people should change the amount of money, but when you're playing at that level of politics, <laughs> you avoid such things. Even if people con you out of money, you rise above that. You have your air ticket back to Canada, just get onto the aircraft and keep your image intact. Don't give some of your supporters an excuse to doubt you. Anyway, that is the politics. But as an individual, Miguna is a man who has suffered a lot. And it's still a great puzzle, yeah, to me at least, 
why he had to go through all this, what the government were really up to. Because to me, it looks like a very personal thing. To me, it looks like decisions were made in some CD bar where people who are supposed to be very sober when they're making their decisions were not sober. And now, taxpayers have ended up losing a lot. Yeah, court cases, blah, 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 getting officials that they able to drag him across. <laughs> hey, gosh. Eh? And then finally, this court award, 7.2 million gone. Assuming that the government will pay. Yeah, because unfortunately, our government has got a very bad reputation of not paying awards. The government has a track record of ignoring court orders and orders from the court. But there's one more thing I'd like to mention before I go. The return of Miguna to Kenya. Many people are doubting yeah, that actually the government will allow Miguna back to the country as per the court orders. Actually, the court has ordered the government to facilitate his return into the country. Hopefully, in the spirit of the handshake, the government will prove me wrong. If I was the president of Kenya, I would even personally receive Miguna at the airport and welcome him back into the country. Anyway, let's wait and see what happens next. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. In 2005, there was a lot of hopelessness amongst Kenyans. The promises of a new Kenya, the promises of a new beginning that we had been given in 2002 during the general elections that had removed Kanu from power were dead in the water. Out of those ashes, the Kumekucha brand was born in May 2005 to vent and to fight for a better Kenya because long-suffering Kenyans have always deserved better. Contrary to propaganda on the web, the Kumekucha blog was never launched as a business enterprise and through the years it has always been self-financed through some very difficult times. Twelve years on and still counting, our basic premise lives on and remains the same. And that's why I'm really, really excited today to announce this golden new opportunity for you to reach your, a huge audience in Kenya and all over the world with the brief commercials for your business. They will of course interrupt our videos just like this message you're taking in. And like the Kumekucha videos, they'll be permanent. And what is more, we are so committed to ensuring that you get the results you desire that will allow you to place the spot for free. Yep, you'll not be able to, you'll not pay for it, yeah? You'll only pay for it when you're fully satisfied with the results. Of course, we'll request a small fee for the video production, but it's a pittance. Are we crazy? Oh no, we are not. We're just very sure that you're going to get a result. I mean, 10 million views is not a joke. Why are we doing this? Of course, it will go a long way in helping us cover our video production costs on this channel. But that's not the reason. That's not the main reason. You can call me naive, but I sincerely believe that the more prosperous businesses we have owned by Kenyans, the easier it will be to push through the changes we want. And by prosperous businesses, I don't mean businesses which make money out of corruption and stealing from public coffers. Those are not businesses. Those are criminal enterprises. Anyway, if you have a genuine uh, business, this is a golden opportunity for you and I recommend that you take it on immediately. Get all the details you require in the video description area on this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening to me. All for a better Kenya.